Welcome to the Strong Life Coach Podcast, where we speak life, coach life, write life, and lead life. Today, I'm joined by special guest, Lucretia Bach. Lucretia, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate being on. Yes. Um, one, thank you for your time. And I'm excited. I think, you know, you and I discussing already and seeing your influence that you have, I'm excited that you're going to be able to share principles from your journey and that the audience tuning in are going to be able to hear these uh these nuggets of of our pearls of uh of value to be able to apply to their life and then their journey to be able to help them out yes thank you thank you all right so i do want to make sure that people listening in know who you are so i'm sitting down with a commercial real estate advisor at ncg commercial real estate did i get that right you did exactly all right so let me ask you um, what inspired you to become a commercial real estate advisor well, it's a it's an odd story. It's not one you're going to hear every day, but mm-hmm. I had a dream, oh, okay. and I believe in dreams, and yes. I believe that there's a purpose and a, a point to the dream. Mm-hmm. And I basically the dream meant the interpretation of the dream because there's an interpretation mm-hmm. um, was that uh, commercial real estate or real estate as a whole mm-hmm. wasn't exactly commercial, but real estate was my mission field yes and i believe every a person has a purpose and a destiny Mm -hmm. and i want to help people meet their purpose and destiny and the way i do that is through commercial real estate and it started in a dream all right that's where it started and and you know what all the people that have come on they have a different journey or different genesis if you will of Mm -hmm. where they just started it might be have been a suggestion by a friend it might i I think um I think I was talking to Julia, you know, our mutual friend, um, Julia um, Matika. Yes. And we were talking on on Monday a few days ago, and she was just sharing her vision for being an author came from a friend. So you might have a dream or you might have a friend, but thinking about our mission field, and I, I like how you tied in your purpose of yes. why I'm here. Sure. And you've identified yours, and I'm here to make an impact and be influential yeah. in commercial real estate. Right. I love hearing that. Thanks. So let's talk about leadership. When did you first see yourself as a leader? I was I was under the age of 10 mm-hmm. and um I got a group of people together kids mm-hmm. you know yes. to go see the movie The Money Pit. Okay. Now this is a long time ago so mm-hmm. these um these kids it, they all I put a list together mm. and I had a good mix of boys and girls Uh-oh. who showed Big up. Time. And mm-hmm. you know we got to the movie and i looked down the aisle and i was like i was able to put this group together yes and they followed Mm -hmm. so i realized that i had something that you know that would be able to congregate people Mm -hmm. um, make people you know interested in doing something for for mutual benefit yes and something that was really neat so yeah i was pretty young i I love hearing it was a simple task or simple entertainment of going to see a movie and you identifying that because i think about the children and i think about even myself growing up i was and i've asked when did i first see myself you know in as a leader or as a communicator or anything like that or with many people with their with their children they're they're thinking about their kids how can i help identify their gifts and their purpose or their calling right and Mm -hmm. but for you I, i love hearing about how you were influencing these you were organizing you created some structure and there is a plan of where y'all y'all would be and you got everybody together. So that, that's a big time, Thanks. big time for a yeah, child. We did it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We did it. It was an interesting movie. It makes you not want to buy a, a house that needs still a lot of renovation. So Okay, so the money pit was even tied into your calling and your career regarding uh somewhat, somewhat. You okay, you, you don't want to buy an old house that needs a bunch of money because you never know how much more that it needs mm-hmm. than what what's behind the wall. Yes, see, I didn't realize. I, um, I I didn't um, I'm not as familiar with money pit, but it's fascinating that it's still re- related to your calling of real estate sure, yeah. and seeing your leadership journey, even that genesis of when you first saw yourself that way. Yeah, but I did buy a, a house to renovate in Florida when I lived there, so. Okay. Uh, I didn't necessarily learn a lesson from Money Pit and okay, then avoid no. them completely. But, no, yeah. no, I got you. I got you. No, Florida. Okay. So you have to be on another podcast to talk about your Florida journey because yeah. I didn't know there was a Florida element to your journey. So yeah. uh, we'll have to talk more about that one. Well, let's let's discuss. So I asked you about being a leader when you, when you first saw yourself. When did you first see yourself as an entrepreneur? 
You know, my dad has always been very good at um, making sure I understood what you could do with your talents. Mm -hmm. And um, I created this clay taco. Clay taco. This taco out of clay. Okay. And um, it had all the elements of a taco. Mm -hmm. Looked exactly like a taco Uh with the little fingers on the side. (laughs) Okay. And um, I got finished. I painted it so it looked real. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, it's kid real, right? Right, right. It's not real, real, but it's Mm -hmm. kid real. And my dad was like, you could sell that. Uh Uh-oh. He was trying to figure out, you know, trying to help me to monetize my gift. Yes. And so, I realized at a young age that things can be monetized from mm-hmm. what I was doing and that I could be one of those people. Wow. But my dad was always trying to help me figure out how to monetize mm-hmm. my gifts and how to monetize things that and that that I did and and that's one of them the clay taco was clay kind of taco. A, a start there. Yes. To, to that you could write a book on the clay taco i could i could write a book on the clay taco i don't yes. even know where it is now, yeah. you know what's interesting about it is you you reminded me of this is when i was in elementary school and um and i i was i grew up here in san antonio so i grew up yes. on the southeast side and um i don't know how or what but my mom would go to the flea market on the weekends so yeah. if we'd go to the flea market and at the flea market they would sell these bags of lollipops you know these lucas um you know, uh, spicy lollipops with a watermelon. Oh, so there are wow. watermelons with the um, the spice o- over it, and um, so I began to buy the pack of I think it was forty or I knew with the pack um, I I could buy the pack for four bucks, yeah, and then I could sell it like if I sold every single lollipop for a quarter, right? Um, I could b- make ten bucks. So that was like a significant, you know, a little little profit. Oh, yeah, you're but, doing really well. <laughs> but but to your point is um. I didn't see it as anything. I just thought like, yeah, this is like basic, buy the bag, sell a lollipop for a quarter. Now my my, my basketball coach, and, and I'm cutting it off and said, hey, squash that real quick. But to your point, you know, you have you have these experiences as a child and it's like, okay, um, was that the first time? And I, I didn't put that together until you shared your story and it just reminded me of this lollipop sharing event, you know? I'm gl- glad the clay taco brought out the best in you. <laughs> the, water, the watermelon pop seller. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Now, what would you say is the most rewarding part of being a business owner? I think uh, the ability to affect change, Mm -hmm. um, to influence people, to help them and meet meet their goals, Mm -hmm. um, to be able to um, see what the client needs Mm -hmm. and uh, align with that need Mm -hmm. um, and serve them to the best of your ability to where they meet that goal yes. and that need. And I think that's extremely important. I think people mm-hmm. need people in the commercial real estate world who serve mm-hmm. others and treat them with integrity and passion. Yes. You know, and and, and it's not, because it's not about me. Mm-hmm. This is about somebody else's dream goal. Right. You know, and, and need mm-hmm. and desire. And so that's important to me. It's it's neat to to serve them where mm-hmm. they where they are. Yes, I could see how it's meaningful and fulfilling because, in you you tell me the kind of clients you deal with, but I'm imagining a client who's starting the business for the first time, or they're getting a property for their business for the first time, and then you're able to help them fulfill that need. And now you you two have this. This really, it's a lifelong bond of Lucretia Bach helped me to get my first real estate property ever, right. and we always have that memory shared together. Mm-hmm. Have you? Have, right, and I have that. I mean, I have a, I have a client I helped with an insurance. She was an insurance, a, a brand new, relatively brand new insurance agent, and mm-hmm. we got our first office, and it was tiny. You know, it's tiny, mm-hmm. narrow space, and in, in a um in the space and and basically she it was her first office and mm-hmm. she's just thrilled with it yes she's gonna outgrow it yes and that, that's the goal right and then you yeah. can help her again well we did a five-year lease so mm-hmm. um, at the end of five years she's gonna be crying probably for bigger space <laughs> okay but she has some options to get you know but, and, that, that space. and that's the beauty of what you do you're helping these successful people right um to that are they're dreaming big they're having a vision for their business sure and to even hear you 
as the seller uh, and you're helping them to be connected with these properties it's it's lovely to hear like your vision for them you sure. heard, hey you're, go you're gonna outgrow this yeah i uh, think she will mm -hmm. I, I think she will especially with her plans and how she's doing things she's a good business person yes so. let me ask you about um the the person or if there was a person who was the biggest influence in your leadership journey and how did they influence you you know i've had a lot of great influences in my life when mm -hmm. if i had to pick one mm -hmm. um i had a leadership coach um, when i first started go out. coaches yeah go coaches right <laughs> i had a leadership coach when i first started in the business mm -hmm. and uh, his name was jim dance with the yeah. walter strayer group mm -hmm. and um he just really went through some of the principles of leadership Mm -hmm. And I was very hungry to learn these things yes. at the time. And because I was leading a group of 56 people or wow. about to. Mm -hmm. And so I really needed that information. And I was able to take that information and apply it to my life and, and really uh, come back and, and be the kind of leader that I needed to be. Yes. Yeah. And the word that, that stood out that you used is applying what you are hearing sure. to your life right because we can be in these situations where we have the best material ever right? right the best content the best words the best teaching the best you know we could be receiving the best of the best of the best regarding content but without the application it almost is pointless yeah right so it's true so there's power in the application and, and that's what you were doing and I, i'm always surprised when i ask this question of who and then this the idea that it can you can pinpoint one person and as you said we probably all can list numbers of people sure. who poured into us invested in us but i love hearing you tie it back to this guy jim dance sure and but then what you you connected it with is he was giving you content you were applying yeah. right away and that you were hungry for it yeah i've also seen people i don't want to be like Yes, you know, in leadership roles, mm -hmm. and you learn. I think, I think, as a leader and and someone who you who influences people around you, no matter to what extent or what title or level, mm -hmm. um, you learn what not to do. Right, right. There's cautionary tales around us. Yeah, you know, of ooh, I never want to be like that guy. Right, right? I don't want to do the squirrel. It's called the squirrel management. Come in, drop a well seagull management come in, drop a bunch of poop and leave. Right. You know, and and I'm just not, that's just not me. I don't want to do mm -hmm. that. I don't want to, but you know, that's, I didn't know what it was called until Jim Dance told me. Yes. So Jim was a very big influence in my life mm -hmm. and leadership. And grateful to him. It, it makes me think about, you know, and these are certainly, I mean, maybe that's a question I'll add to this little, this template of questions that I ask people, which is um, how have bad leaders I mean, I mean, and I'm going to no make a note to myself, how have bad influ leaders influenced your leadership journey? Because that's such a, it's, I, think, yeah. I think it's a relevant question because we, we all have have had them. Uh, yeah. In some way, it might have yeah. been a teacher. It might have, it, sadly, it might have been a parent yes. or a boss along the way. But we've either had them or seen them, mm -hmm. but they can teach us powerful lessons as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who inspired you? to open your own business. Actually, I guess we, we sort of discussed that one. So let me skip over that one. Um, what unique challenge have you overcome in your leadership journey? Well, I think the stinking thinking is the the number mm -hmm. one thing that you have to really overcome. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a battle. It may not be an everyday battle, mm -hmm. but it may be an every month battle, maybe once a week where you have to say, it depends on the person, absolutely. You know, absolutely yes. depends on the person, but um and it might be every day for a few days and you you know you just got in a bad place but mm -hmm. um stinking thinking is really important to overcome and for me i just um sometimes i'm like i get in, into that place of of questioning you know this or that or that or this and mm -hmm. i just have to come out of it i have to realize no i this wasn't something that i just came up with mm -hmm. i was called into this that's right and um i know what i i was called into yes um and i know what i've done well mm -hmm. for myself and for my family right because i this wasn't just a journey that i just decided to do commercial real estate on my own i've been mm -hmm. doing commercial real estate for a while mm -hmm. but for my family and we my grandfather started in a commercial real estate business in the 50s and 60s nice. he, he bought 
uh, buildings. And so I have a heritage, a family heritage of doing this business mm-hmm. um, and applying it to uh, to my clients. So yes, so overcoming stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Um, we can do a podcast on stinking thinking and yes. just have discussion about it. And we all we all relate to it. You know, I talk to people often. You know, of course, as a coach, one thing that we're doing is we're assessing their life, right? And sure. we're believing the change is paramount. We're clarifying a, go- a goal focus. But one thing we're doing is we identify or we um, we foresee the obstacles mm-hmm. and asking that question over and over again to a variety of people along the way, what do you foresee as being an obstacle for you? And over and over again, it's my thoughts, my yeah. doubts, my fears, my worries, my insecurities. Sure. And um, But I appreciate you sharing that because we can all relate to it. You know, we all relate right. to having thoughts that aren't building us up they're not benefiting me they're not helping me to be successful yes. if anything they're like this dead weight that are holding me down but i, I like how you segue that piece and you said instead of getting like trapped by this the stinking thinking remembering your calling yeah you have to choose it mm-hmm. has to be a gut level choice sometimes I, mm-hmm. I had a friend who used to say that you just have to make a, a cold-blooded choice mm-hmm. on certain things yes and some days no matter if you're the very best at what you do and you know you've been called and you know you're good at what you do, yes. some days it's just a it's a cold blooded choice to do it again that mm-hmm. day. You yes. know, because every day starts out the same. Mm-hmm. You wake up, you put your feet on the floor. Yes. That's exactly the same right. every day. You have to have a cold blooded choice to get mm-hmm. up that day. Yes. So uh, one of the things I think about when it comes to me is we have these experiences in life, right? So it's so if we're lucky, we have like whatever, it might be 70% positive experiences, 30% bad. But some yeah. some days it feels like, hey, this is 80% bad day and 20% good or something yeah. like that. But you have those days or you have those moments. I remember, you know, being in, in the insurance career and finding out that my job was being eliminated. You know, I was going through a layoff. In that moment, what I felt was I felt disposable, like yeah. thrown away. Like when they considered the contribution and talent that I was bringing to the table, versus my salary they were weighing those out and I said you know what the salary is more important to us so and I, and I don't know if it was exactly like that behind the scenes but I just what I felt I felt like that I, I wasn't worth it yeah but having to come back to my calling my vision is if some if I understand my value and if I understand my worth if I understand that I'm intelligent that I have valuable contributions to give to people sure. to your point of I know what I'm great at communication i've been told that my entire life if i understand that then this is what i need to be doing versus the role that i had before that i probably wasn't that great in it um in the first place and that wasn't part of my calling yeah yeah Yeah. now when it comes to being a business owner what unique challenge have you overcome in that space well i think i have had to differentiate myself from people from Mm -hmm. other brokers and yes um, you know, I, yeah, I'm a real estate advisor. I'm a, I'm a realtor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. You know, I, I'm. The the state considers me a realtor or a real estate agent, but mm-hmm. I'm an advisor. Um, and I've had to differentiate myself because a lot of people can sell real estate. Sure. Um, but you know, for me, it's it's about the passion and integrity behind it. Yes. I, it's about specializing in office properties. Mm-hmm. I specialize, and th- there aren't a lot of people who really specialize. They'll mm-hmm. do any of it. Right. And so, I'm a little different. I want to, I focus on office properties. Mm-hmm. Does that mean I'm going to exclude everything? No, no, not necessarily. It just depends. It's a pick and choose kind of thing, what comes by and what I feel like I'm supposed to do, but mm-hmm. I, I feel I, I sense that that specializing uh, gives the advantage to my client, and I also have the ability to financially analyze the, mm-hmm. that property to such an extent where it really helps that client make a good decision on internal rate of return, cash on cash, mm-hmm. uh, capitalization rate, the things that are important in commercial real estate mm-hmm. um, to analyze the investment and and what what's a good investment for that person. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
I remember the, one of the first presentations I've ever saw at, at Business Network International. It was you, it was the, the, the BNI group. You were sharing your passion for office. You, you held up a, um, a stapler remover. Yes. It was the alligator, but yes. it, it, it connected your brand. Your, the image of what you want us to think about is office commercial real estate is Lucretia Bach, right? Yes. And it, and it worked and it was effective. And, um, and I think, as you brand yourself that way, it's something that now, now, now when I think about office, right? So even you were speaking, I was thinking about my sister. She has an office. My mom has an office right. and, and they have existing offices. And it's something that, I, that it makes me want to go, let me go ask them how satisfied they are with their office. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think just a few moments ago, I received a message from my sister asking me about the pros and cons of her, um, her office space. Sure. And, but it just, as you specialize, I think there's such a strength to it because you're able to, um, have this association in people's minds with your brand of okay you know office commercial real estate is who you are yeah and that's really important because um it's what i go after and I, it's what i i love office properties i mm -hmm. just, it's kind of strange you know mm -hmm. i've i've worked in large cities and large skyscrapers and i just think that's really cool yes you know so. mm -hmm. and small small offices too so I got you. Now, how have you had a change in your leadership journey? Wow, you know, I've I really um, I was working and and I had a cousin who took me aside and and took me to lunch and basically uh, said, "Look, you're you're in a new role now." Uh, this was years ago, you mm -hmm. know, over over a decade and a half, mm -hmm. more than that, you know, and he said you're you're doing the tasks so what i was doing was i was accomplishing tasks right mm -hmm. left i was extremely proficient mm -hmm. and doing what needed to get done but i was rolling and absolutely bowling over people mm -hmm. to do it mm -hmm. and i was young i was in my 20s and 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 i just didn't i didn't value the 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 relational assets around me yes and he was telling me, look, do you know this woman, this woman's grandchildren? Do you know what their names? Do you know how many she has? Wow. And it was somebody I saw every day. Mm -hmm. And I came from a, a culture that they didn't care. Right. They didn't care about how many, you know, how many children you had, what a, mm -hmm. if you were married, if you were not married, they, they didn't care. So that was the culture I was bringing in, mm -hmm. you know, and he just. He kind of took me to lunch and said, "You're in the wrong, mm -hmm. and then, you know, and you need to change." Yes, and you're in a different role now. Mm -hmm. You've got to be more relational. You've got to get things done from a relational standpoint, and mm -hmm. just kind of take your time. You yes, know? it's a, one. Thank you for your vulnerability and being real sure. about that. I think um, hearing about that area, it, it, it would be a complete shot. I'm like, what? Like the the lucretia that i know yeah it cares about the people you know you're uplifting you're positive you're optimistic you're generous when it comes to trying to help other people out that, that i've seen and uh, to think about like you're not caring about the people again it, it, it's it's mind-boggling because that's not your brand right now right but sharing that part of your journey and each of us has that has a moment along the way where we had to change we had to grow we had to be different if we were going to get to that next level in our lives sure um, but I, I, I appreciate that respect and I think it's a great challenge for us, for anybody listening of the people around us, do you know them, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not just, the, you know, it's not just, okay, your neighbor, but do I know my neighbor's name? You know, do I, sure. I'm, a, I'm asking questions like, okay, of the neighbors around me, how many do I know, know, you know, and um, so I think it's a great call in knowing people deeper and not in, in valuing them. I, I like that phrase you used as well. Now, how have you had to improve in owning your own business? Well, I've, I really, um, I, sometimes I get away from the core things I need to be doing. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference between doing the business and working in the business and working on the business. Mm -hmm. um, and I was working on the business too much and not working in the business enough. Mm. So I was doing a whole lot of networking, yes, and and things like that, where 
I really needed to be working in the business. So, if, for example, prospecting calls, I gotta, you know, I've got to do a better job of doing my calls, and I've done mm-hmm. a better job over the last three weeks, you know. Nice. And so I've I've really applied myself and uh, done my calls, and I have to be careful because you know I'm. Um, I can only do so much. I, I, some mm-hmm. people can do a hundred calls a day, and I just, you know, I that's, just, that, that's intense. That's very intense, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm not there. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not at the hundred calls a day. Sure, because I'm so relational that I want to be, I want to be viable. I want to be mm-hmm. relevant to the person. Yes, and I don't change. I, I, you know, I I think about the person in front of me. Mm-hmm. You know, even if I was trained to to just keep going and you know do it, I. Mm-hmm. I don't. That's, I, I'm more uh, thoughtful about that next call and that person because mm-hmm. I want to talk to the person, not the, not just the 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 number, mm-hmm. you know, the phone number. So. Wow. No, it, it's um, it, it, it's, a, it's an upward call for me. I think about the amount of networking things that I do in my business, and I'm asking, but the idea of working. You said it in versus on. Mm-hmm. And so, in the if I understand it right, this is my first time hearing this phrase, by the way, which I sure. love, and I'm putting that in my files, by the way. Um, but so, on the business is like networking with other people who could potentially lead you to um, clientele. Mm-hmm. But then, working in the business is is those calls to the clientele themselves. Is that the yeah? One? So we in commercial real estate, you have to um, get the property owners and. Mm-hmm. It's a long process, but you basically make a database of property owners. Okay. It takes a lot of effort and it's not just a, oh, well, here's a list, call the list. That doesn't work. Mm-hmm. You have to create your own business and create your own your own database. So yes. it's calling for me, working in it is calling those people and mm-hmm. having something of value for them mm-hmm. to talk about. Yes. Um, because I I want to engage them in relationship and it's really the only way to do it. Otherwise, mm. you're not going to know right. who these people are. That's right. You know, I mean, yeah, otherwise you're spraying people with like a like a, a shotgun as opposed to a rifle approach. Mm. So, okay. Ooh, deep. So, another good analogy. I need I need to dissect that one a little bit. Yeah. So shotgun. So the spray, is that the spray? That's a spray. Yeah. Rifle. The, rifle is the targeted marketing calls that um, I make. They're prospecting calls. Gotcha. Some people call it cold calling, but it's really not cold because you have their name, you have the where their where their property is. Mm-hmm. You know a lot more about them than they probably want you to know. <laughs> but you see how much they paid in taxes last right, year for their right. buildings. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. I like that. I, I think I'm going to take those two principles for sure away. The in working on the company versus in the company. Right. And then the shotgun approach versus the rifle. Sure. All right. You want to do the rifle. Do the rifle. Targeted. Yeah. All right. Be now. Sniper. Business sniper. How have you continued to grow in your leadership journey? Gosh. Um, you know, I think, I think I've just continued to apply the principles that I learn. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I continue to reevaluate, re- reassess, and apply principles I hear. Pick up the things that work and apply them. Mm-hmm. Drop the things that don't. Yes, and go forward. Yes, I like that. And I think there's a principle at, at, in coaching. I think about two, these two like pillar principles. It's there's a part of it where I want to c- explore with my clients. Right what's helped them be successful, right? So I was working with, you know, this past weekend, I was working with a client who she just finished her master's degree and, but she's looking for more success, right? Just why, you know, where I come in and she's sharing with me the journey and I'm going, okay, let's, what's helping you be, what helped you be successful with that master's degree? Let's explore what helped you be successful right there. And those strategies that helped you to get the master's degree can potentially be used to help you with other areas of your life, your, your fitness, your, social life you know we can just use the same success principles that helped you in one er- arena of your life in other areas and to your point about application and trying things out and seeing what works i think it's such a valuable lesson because there's what i what i talk about is there's the the journey into past success but then there's the the nurturing of creativity right what have i never tried that i can try now sure you know even more we're like when i'm talking to people about like fitness and let's say they want to lose 10 pounds for whatever reason and they pick that out but um 
But if what about trying something like to your point of that I've never tried before? Let me mm-hmm. try out. I've never done group exercise, or I've never had a trainer, or I've never. What have you never done? You know, nowadays there's so many things to try out, right? Sure. But you, oh, can, yeah. you can have a virtual trainer at your house who goes through a workout with you, you know, from your phone. Um, but there's so many things you could try out. So I, I, I like the principle of trying. Like you have these new experiences that that are really contributing to your growth in your leadership journey. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how have you developed yourself? in your leadership journey? Wow, that's a hard question. Um, you know, I really don't know how to answer that okay. at okay. this point. Okay, okay, we could, we, we, could, uh, we, could, we could move on to the next one. We could edit that part out. Yeah, well, I don't even remember what I, you can edit this out too. I don't even remember what I said. Yeah, no, we could, completely good. And it's easy to ed- edit even the video too. We'll just slide right over this. Cool. Um, all right. What experience has helped you grow the most in your leadership journey? I think the mistakes I make. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if you're not taking risk, yes, and you're not making mistakes, um, then you're not learning anything. Mm-hmm. My great grandfather used to say, "You're you ain't learning nothing when you're talking unless you're saying the wrong thing." Oof. So he would. I'm gonna he, take that one. Mm-hmm. So he he also said a whole lot of other things I probably shouldn't repeat <laughs> too. I never really knew him. He died at, uh, of a heart attack, but he. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, but he was my great grandfather. So, but anyway, he um, he hones honed in on that principle that mm-hmm. you know unless you're doing something wrong, you're not learning anything. Yes. And I think we have a whole host of people now who are afraid to mm-hmm. make mistakes. Yes. And we can't be afraid to make mistakes. And I think you grow as a business owner, you grow Oof. as a leader when you trip and fall and you fall on your face right. and you're able to do something different. Yes. Um, because you tried it. Mm-hmm. And um, I think the the mark of success is how many times you get it up, not how yes. many times you fall. Preach it. I mean, Preach you've, that. you've got to fall, mm-hmm. you know. Y- y- you've got to fall and 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 i think that's extremely important when you're mm-hmm. when you're working and when you're when you're doing life yes so fall but always get up oh yes hey you're giving me some great quotes yeah i'm taking all this away right there which is your first resp- that idea of mistakes and uh and i think about like a baby like learning to walk like right. they're trying falling trying falling nobody will look at that baby and say oh, how stupid or how foolish or what are you doing it's like no no like when it comes to a baby trying to walk we think it's adorable it's cute it's funny it's just uplifting it's all positive all good yeah and they're making a lot of mistakes but they're taking on this new venture of life but when it comes to us sometimes we could be so hard on ourselves when it comes to a mistake and i'll tell you when i make a mistake depending on you know the kind of mistake it is I feel that emotionally. I feel the sadness or the anger or the disappointment or the shock or whatever it is along the way. And in, in, uh, to how you described it, that helps us grow so much because I remember the pain of that mistake and how I want to learn from it. I want to avoid that pain again if I can. Sure. Absolutely you do. I mean, but see, there's some benefit to pain too. Mm-hmm. You just described it. It's... I want to avoid it, yes. so I'll, I won't repeat that again. Mm, yeah. Yes, I love that answer. I'm, I'm, again, I'm, you give me a lot of great content, and that's that's the goal of these. It's just hey, let's ha- have great conversations, get great content, sure. and you did not disappoint. So let's talk about community. Okay, how are you using your leadership gift in the community? Well, I think um, a couple things. I, I've been in a leadership class, and and mm-hmm. you know we. We have an incubator coming up pretty soon with the local school district, and so I'm gonna, you know, kind of, kind of check that out, see if they need mentors. Oh, so that that just like came that. up today. All right. So actually, uh, I got the email about it yesterday, and it clarified it today. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe help some high school kids uh, with some of their ideas and incubator uh, business incubator so that's kind of cool mm-hmm. and also i'm exploring opportunities with um, the habitat for humanity restore 
uh, mm. not not the restore itself, but the Habitat for Humanity affiliate to see uh, if there's a board position available. I know there's currently not, but mm-hmm. um, that doesn't mean that you can't uh, you can't say, "Look, I'm interested." When you have a place, mm. uh, when you have a position of, uh, available, I'm interested, in, and you can only be a board member for three years. Wow! So um, that would be something I'm mm-hmm. I'm pursuing at this point. It's it's a fascinating one, and I I don't know how the process works. I'm not on a board or n- never been on a board in that sense. But I think you you give us a vision of what we could potentially be doing to to be to serve in the community because in that board role, like you're providing some leadership, you're providing some consultation with the experience that you have to be able to help add value to the organization, and it's something um, I think it's a rare but powerful initiative in giving back to the community and serving in a way that i think is unique and it really helps with your um i think with anybody's brand to be able to serve hey i'm on the board of this sure. organization not just to say that i'm on the board but you bring a lot of expertise to the table right yeah. all right so you gave us some great content already one i want to say thank you again for joining the show but before we close i want to hear about your love for mini dachshunds my love for mini dachshunds mm-hmm. you got me on that one yeah <laughs> so i really um i've really loved uh animals a long time uh, but i had a friend who had dachshunds and i fell in love with the breed mm. um especially the short hair uh mini dachshund because they're less maintenance yes so I'm very kind of a low, please don't give me a whole lot I have to do right, when right. it comes to a, an animal. Let mm-hmm. me like not have a lot of grooming and things like that that I have to do, get done. Right. Maintain that animal a whole lot. You know? mm-hmm. So I have Grace, the mini dachshund. She is a, her official name because she's a, she's a red piebald mini dachshund, mm-hmm. which is is a very unique color oh. uh, and some people call it party color but she's she's two colors oh she's, wow she's red dominant red mm-hmm. with white even though she's mostly white so mm-hmm. anyway long and short of it is uh she's uh, uh about 10 pounds mm-hmm. and uh she's a highlight she was uh paralyzed in may she got Whoa. injured got injured and uh and she was paralyzed and down for two months and then i noticed that she was scratching behind her ears with her back leg which means she wasn't paralyzed anymore she could walk so she's walking now so we're grateful for that miracle but come on healing baby that's right so she's been healed and um now she snuggles just as well as she did before the injury so right yeah so she's really great her official name she's purebred her official name is amazing grace bach so she's uh she is amazing because she's bounced back from hardship i love it i love it more power to amazing grace bach yeah all right my friend well again thank you for joining me on the show thanks for having me great time together if you're tuning in i'm here with lucretia bach and this is the strong life coach podcast where we speak life coach life write life and lead life be sure to like the podcast rate it well comment on it share it and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.